Welcome back TCS TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here from the camera store and today we're playing with the Fuji X-E3. Now I know you're used to us giving very in-depth, very long reviews, that's what we're kind of known for, but today I think we're just going to keep it nice and casual and light. Speaking of light, that is beautiful color there. Hang on one sec folks. And actually, that's why we're out here. We actually have these beautiful fall colors. And we've got golden hour going on here. We've got nice yellows and reds. And if you're uh, you know, from Alberta, you know this very well. Our fall lasts about four or five days top. So we've hit it. We've caught it at the right time. We're going to have some fun with the Fuji X-E3 and just see what this little camera can do. Now, the first time Jordan and I saw the Fuji X-E3, it was in Japan. We got a sneak peek to see it, and Jordan actually thought it was one of the most beautiful Fuji cameras he'd seen to date. I, myself, I wasn't quite blown away, but I mean, it does have a very simple, plain, minimalistic kind of look, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, it is very slick and very sleek. First thing you notice is it's quite compact and quite small, although it does have a generous thumb grip, and it does have a nice rubber grip on the front, too, so you don't feel like you're going to drop it. Now, upon closer inspection, we are playing with this thing in the store, and it becomes very apparent that this camera is very similar in a lot of ways to the Fuji X-T20, which we also used and loved. But there are some notable differences that I want to point out, and the first thing that comes to mind is the flat top. You still have the dial controls, but everything's very sleek on top, very flat, because you don't have that sort of faux prism with the viewfinder in the middle. Instead, and I think this is going to be a big selling feature for people who prefer this, you've got the EVF on the top left. So some people who find their nose is always getting against the screen might really like having that off to the side. It's more of a classic rangefinder feel. The other thing you'll notice, the screen does not rotate. And actually, I've been finding, I mean, that's not super critical. Our light is actually very good for viewing LCDs today, but there were some times where I was in the mud kind of shooting low to the ground. I don't want to get in there. So I'm getting the camera out there, and it would be nice to have a rotating screen element. The other thing you're going to note is we don't have a four-way controller on the back of the camera. And that's huge because almost every camera in history in a digital format up to this point has had a four-way control pad. This instead totally takes it away and gives you a joystick controller instead. I love these things, especially for focusing points, you know, moving your focusing point around. It's very natural, it makes a lot of sense, and I love having that on the higher end Fuji bodies. Here, I'm going to play with it as far as menu navigation goes and such, but we don't have the traditional control pad that we're so used to. Now with the Fuji's very minimal design and compact nature, this makes a lot of sense as a walk around companion camera. It's great for just strolling through the park or doing street photography, but there is a negative here, and this is something I found on other Fuji bodies as well. And that is when you turn the camera on and then bring it up to your eye, there we go, there's that significant delay until the viewfinder kicks in and I want to shoot, and it's you know, not a big deal if you're just taking fall colors, but it might be a problem if you're trying to shoot on the street quickly. So keep that in mind. The, the delay there, switching back and forth, it's significant enough to piss off some hardcore photographers. That being said though, I mean, Fuji are very good at always updating their firmware, and maybe that'll get rectified and sped up in the future. Now there are some key differences between the X-E3 and the X-T20, but let's start off with how they're similar. So first off, both have the new 24 mega nickels pickles X-Trans 2 sensor, which is great. Very similar ISO performance, both shoot up to 8 frames per second. They have the same 15 color profile modes, you know, your Velvia and your Astia and your Fuji Chrome and all that kind of stuff. And both cameras also have the same 325 autofocus system. So in that regard, very, very similar, but there are some key differences too. Now I'm going to go right off the bat and just say that I prefer the X-T20's controls better. There's something about just classic buttons and dials that I guess I'm used to. Maybe I'm old-fashioned, but it is still very functional here. On the top of the X-T20, you've got the drive selector, so you can do high-speed continuous, low-speed continuous, single frame, and so on. Well, the X-T3 simply puts a button back here, which is also your garbage button. Now, as for the control pad missing, it's not all doom and gloom because you do have the option 
in the touch screen to customize a four-way selector using the screen itself and your fingers. So you can set up all those usual controls that you might want to use and then simply use the touch screen to activate them. That's a nice clever way to get past the lack of the D-pad. That being said though, when you're in the menus, the touch screen doesn't navigate the menus. So now you're right back to this joystick selector. And while we're on that topic, I do like it. It is very easy to navigate the menus. However, I did find once in a while I might push too hard or accidentally push diagonal when I wanted to go down or so and end up in a menu function that I didn't exactly want. So that's something you're gonna have to get used to. With a bit of practice, I think you'll be fine. But if you're really used to the old way of doing it, there is gonna be a learning curve here. Now to round out the XC3's touchscreen features, of course you've got pinch and zoom and swipe when you're in playback, but I also particularly like that when you've got the camera up with the EVF, you can still use the touch controls. That's a very cool feature, and it sounds like the XT20 is gonna get that as well in a firmware update, and that's gonna be really nice because it doesn't have a joystick selector for focusing points. The only thing I wanted to mention is that the XC3 does not have a built-in flash whereas the X-T20 does. That's okay, when you buy the camera, they give you a little external flash, but I much actually prefer having it built into the camera. Still, it's all about making this camera as small as possible. All right, so I found a child in the park and I'm gonna take pictures of him, uh, which would be creepy, except I made this one, so it's okay. I wanna test the continuous autofocus here. Now the Fuji X-T3 has the same 325 point system as the X-T20, but they've improved the algorithms. It's supposed to be 30% faster. Uh, Jordan's played with it in low light. He was very impressed. Let's try it here right now. Okay, go for it. Now from what we've been playing with, actually that last one was even in, sh in focus, I'm surprised by that. It's actually doing a really, really good job. So the X-T3, excellent focusing camera, definitely a step up over the X-T20, but keep in mind that Fuji's very good at releasing new technology and then updating old cameras. So my guess would be that we've got updates coming out for the other cameras to bring in the same algorithms. But right now, the X-T3 is definitely one of the fastest. Now the X-T3 has 4K video just like the X-T20 and it looks like they're doing an identical thing. No crop, but that means there's some bending, there's some line skipping, and that just equates to a bit of a softer video quality. You know, the X-T2, for example, still had some of the nicest video quality that we've seen so far, but that does have a crop. That, however, makes sense here. I think that most people who are gonna use this camera, more casual in the video realm, uh, they don't wanna have to deal with something cropping when they've got everything framed the way they think it should be in photo mode. So I think it's the right choice, just a little bit soft. Well, as you can probably see, our beautiful light's fading now. We're getting into nighttime, so it's time to go home. But you know, I'm glad we were able to catch the colors that we did catch with the X-E3. And again, Fuji takes such beautiful photos. Image quality is great. I love the color. I enjoyed using the X-E3, but overall, I still think the X-T20 is the better bet. This camera now has Bluetooth as a part of its Wi-Fi. That's kind of nice. And the controls took some getting used to, but they were quick and simple, and the camera is very compact. I do like that. Now when you look at price point, the X-T20 and the X-T3 are only $50 apart, so even more reason why it's really going to come down to the handling for you, which one to go for. But keep in mind, you could also get a Sony a6300 at this price point. That will give you better video quality, faster continuous shooting, and it would probably give the autofocusing a run for its money here. That being said, I love the Fuji 1855 2.8-4. to That's an awesome kit lens, way better than the Sony 1650. And that makes the X-T3 a really nice choice for a compact camera. I hope you folks enjoyed our time out here in Alberta's fall. Uh, don't forget, check us out on Instagram, tweet to us, put comments below. A nice quick review for you here, but we'll see you soon with more cameras to come.